I put our music on iTunes. First month, 30,000. Second month, 30,000. Every month, 30, 30, 30. And like, you know, coming from somebody who was dead broke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that that was life changing us. And so that that gave me the window that it's possible to do these things on your own. What up, what up, what up? I'm Brand Man Sean. <laughs> and I'm Corey. And we are back with No Labels Necessary Podcast. You know, you can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you stream your uh, your podcast, talking about the music industry, content creator economy, and how can you get that cash? And speaking of cash, we got a very special guest today. What's going on, everybody, man? J.R. McKee. How y'all doing out there? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this guy before we get into it, because he, he's probably not going to stunt on y'all himself. But, you know, J.R. McKee's been a part of building multiple labels, but also part of bo building multiple distribution companies. He mm -hmm. is an owner of a distribution company called NPR Today. Just a few weeks ago, he officially won a Grammy. Now, is that yeah. your first Grammy? It's my second. Your my second, second Grammy. Grammy. Yeah, it's oh, my second. See, that's, Thank you. That's Thank a different you. conversation, man. <laughs> a different conversation. So uh, before we even get deeper into one, I want to ask you about that Grammy experience, just so people can get a, a sense of what that actually looks like. Uh, I also want to talk about, it's a really special podcast, because this is our very first guest on the podcast, and yeah, I think- it. It's perfect because we actually got a partnership that we're going into JR with that we'll give you more information about a little bit later in this podcast. But y'all know what we've done from a marketing side. Y'all going to hear if y'all don't know about JR already. Y'all are going to hear what he's done in terms of helping breaking artists and his experience from record labels, distribution companies. And we're going to be able to give y'all a holistic perspective on how to apply it to yourself, whether you're an artist, manager label owner or aspiring to be multiple we know we got the multi hyphenates out there so starting off jr yes sir we get anywhere yet yeah, i i gotta know that grammy experience you were you were telling us some stuff that i wasn't aware of already yeah <laughs> what, what what is that like so um a couple of weeks ago we won a grammy for money long hours and hours the specific grammy was best r&b performance um you know, we were there, we were at the Grammys, me and the team. And, you know, honestly, we were nominated for three. Uh, best New Artist, uh, Money Long, Best R&B Performance for Money Long, and Best R&B Song, I believe it was, mm. for Money Long. Um, and we won one out of the three. But honestly, I was just, I was surprised, shocked, um, you know, elated, if I can use that word. Because I'm mean, in our in our category best R&B performance that we won, there was Beyonce, Jasmine Sullivan, mm. Mary J. Blige, and so you're up like we're the newbies, yeah. you know what I mean? So you're up against like the heavyweights, and so you know why I was hopeful, you know what I mean? <laughs> I wouldn't win if I wasn't hopeful. I, I had some hope, you know what I mean? But but you know I just didn't know, and so in that moment when they said and the Grammy goes to, <laughs> it said money long, bro. I, Man, bro, that's like one of the most special moments I ever had. <laughs> we got more so, special than the first one. Yeah, cause so the first one, um, so the first one we won for Rihanna, um, back in like, sheesh, man, probably like 2013. Okay. Um, it was Rih Rihanna's album. Um, I can't even think of the name of, it, but I know the song. It was love song. Uh, it was Rihanna and Future love song. Oh yeah. And, and so, um, the writer on that, um, is a girl. She goes by the name of Blue June. And so, you know, I was fortunate enough to to come across her um, before anybody else had come across her. She was working. I don't know if you want the whole story, but yeah, I can give it to you. Put it out there, man. All right, yeah. So she was working with a producer. She was living in Florida and had just moved to Atlanta. She was working there with a producer. And I was at the time I was working on the boo who was VP of Def Jam. Mm -hmm. So he was working on Young G's album. He was working on Rihanna album. And so I found this writer through a producer. He was playing me or well, he sent me songs for a Jeezy album. And I'm like, man, uh, the beast is okay, but this writer, like whoever the, whoever this writer is, she's special. I, I knew it like off the jump. Like, and so I called him, like, bro, who's writing these hooks? And he's like, oh, it's this new girl. She just moved here from Florida. He was like, um, he told me her name, Blue. And I was like, man, I really want to meet this writer. So I met with her, was listening to her, and I was like, man, you know what? You would be special for Rihanna. Like, she was working on Jeezy stuff, because that's what I was working on at the time. But I was like, you would be special for Rihanna. And so I was like, let's make some Rihanna songs. And so we just took it upon ourselves. We made like three or four songs. I sent it to Boom. 
who was in L.A. with Rihanna at the time. And Boo called me. He's like, yo, bro, fly her here now. He was like, get her here now. And so we get there. Like, first of all, I'm new to the industry at this point. This is my first job in the industry. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I'm working with Boo. He hired me as an A&R. It's my first job. Um, Blue's new to the industry. This She had never even really been in a room with an artist before. You know what I mean? She had just moved to Atlanta. Like, I don't want to say the time because I don't know the exact time, but she couldn't have been there more than three months. You know what I mean? And she came to Atlanta to chase her dreams. And so imagine coming to Atlanta to chase your dreams and in a three month span, you in the studio with Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and so that's what happened. So we get in the studio. Uh, Boo calls me. He's not in LA anymore at this point. He calls me. He's like, yo, Future want to do one with Rihanna. I'm finna send it to you. He's like, have Blue write the verses. Um, so he, he sent it. Blue go in, write the verses. Rihanna come in like a day or two later, hear the verses, like, yep, that's it. Cut the verses. And then you go on about a year later, it's nominated for a Grammy. We win a Grammy. And so that was my first one. That was my first one, yeah. <laughs> so when you come in yeah. the game, they're coming to game. And for those who don't know, because also the names are so close, Blue and Boo. Right? Yeah. So, so, so who Boo is. All right. Is. So Boo is Akon's brother. I met Boo at a video shoot. Um, shout out to K. Clark Casting. So K. Clark is a legendary casting director in Atlanta. K used to invite me to video shoots. Um, obviously, I'm not a model. <laughs> but, you know, I got cool with K and I just wanted to meet people. That was my way of networking. Yeah. And so I got cool with K. She so JR, come to this shoot. Come to that shoot. She invited me to a Chris Brown shoot and Boo was there. And so that's how I met Boo. He's Akon's brother. Um, Boo, very big in the industry for A&R. Right now, he currently manages Kanye West. Um, and he has his own label deal at Columbia right now. I think he's actually like VP of Columbia or something right now at this point, at this moment. Um, but so that's Boo. And then Blue, her name is Blue June. Um, again, like I said, um, back then, you know, she had just moved and I heard her on some Jeezy hooks. Um, but she went on. And so the Beyonce album, she blew, blew, blew on four Grammys this weekend for the Beyonce. Word. Blue, Blue. I was like, you saw that talent for real. Yeah. Blue wrote 80% of this Renaissance album. And so, so Blue is one of the biggest writers in the game right now. I mean, you know, she took she took the momentum and ran with it. her and her partner. She has a partner, um, Coney. They're they're um, a duo. They write and produce, and so they they did like eighty percent of that album. That's dope. Man. Yeah, that's dope. How does that feel? Just having that eye for talent? Because I know y'all probably aren't necessarily working together in the same capacity, yeah. but just right, right. But we're still like man. super close. Like yeah. I, we started in this together. You know what I mean? So we're still super close. I mean. I don't know, bro. Like that's some some things are like skill and like you learn over time and some things is just God given. Yeah. And that's one of those God given things that I, I don't take no credit for. I was just excited that I got it <laughs> and, and can use it and, and yeah. put it to good use. You know what I mean? So. So, yeah. Sure. Well, now back to the Grammy specifically, you were telling us that on a business side, right? Yeah. You don't necessarily get a Grammy. Which right. Which is cool also, because we talk a lot to like the producer or artist who win a Grammy, but we rarely get to hear about from a business person who got Grammy. Yeah. yeah so so Money Long, so she signed in partnership with our distribution company um, back in May of 21. And we put out hours and hours in December, no, November 19th of 21. Um, by December 31st, it was the number one song on Apple Music. Uh, we ended up being the number seven most streamed song in the world that year. Um, and we went on to get nominated for three Grammys. The Grammy that she won, however, was Best Performance. And so she's the only performer on the song. So she's the only one that will win the physical Grammy because she, she won Best Performance. Uh, so as a performer, she wins the physical. But everybody else involved, you can't get the certificate, which is you know, uh, a sheet of paper, like a, like you know how you get your high school diploma. Yeah. Okay, it's very similar to that. You get yeah. the you get the certificate. You know, you won a Grammy. <laughs> you know I mean? Wait, so is like you said performance specifically. So if is there other type of Grammys? Yeah. What so 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 you have like it's so crazy. You have best song, which is everybody involved in the songs. Like for instance, the writer, producer, um, engineer. But then you have best record, which is the label. Like it, it's like so every different category has different standards of who all gets a physical Grammy. Got it. You know what I'm saying? So like it's so funny because when I was there, I ran into Coney, a uh, blues partner. Um, Blue and Coney are the writing producer duo, and they had already won two. 
And Coney was like, yo, I really want this next one because we win a physical Grammy on this next one. The other two, we only get a certificate. And so she's like, I really want this next one because that's how we get a physical. Yeah. And so, and so, yeah, it matters. So, like, it matters what the category is that, that will determine who all gets an actual physical Grammy. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Now, bringing Money Long, obviously a prolific writer herself yeah. in the game, but then wanted to transition to the art. To the artist, artist right. Was there anything in particular that you know, you helped with or for just from well, the yeah. side, like how do you support an artist and help them through that transition? So, so I got a call from a friend, uh, Dre Davis. Um, I've known Dre for uh, many years. He runs a, a touring company, Blue Alley Touring. Um, but he was working with Money Long um, prior to even she changed her name. So her name is Priscilla Renee. She's one of the top three writers, if not the number one writer of our generation. There's nobody with more platinum and multi-platinum records than Priscilla Renee. You know what I mean? So she's like a, a top three, if not number one writer of our generation. Um, but she, she started as an artist. Um, she started as on YouTube when YouTube first started, I think in 2004. Yep. Um, blew up on YouTube. She was the first viral artist on YouTube. She got signed to, I want to say Capital, but I really don't know. She got signed to a label. You know what I mean? Um, back then. And so I think that was 2006. So more than 10 years ago, she was an artist, um, but at some point, you know, she got interested in writing. Somebody broached that to her, like, hey, you should write. She had such interest in writing and became, you know, she, I think her first big single was a Rihanna record, uh, ironically, uh, California King Bed. Um, I think might have been her first, but I'm not sure, like, the, the whole catalog. But since then, there isn't an A-list artist that doesn't have a platinum record with Priscilla Renee. She has wrote for every single A-list artist there is, and their hits, not songs that's sitting on the album. She wrote their hits. Yeah. You know what I mean? So phenomenal writer. Um, but again, she always wanted to be an artist first. And so I got called in when they said, hey, you know, Priscilla Renee, she's changed her name to Money Long. She wants to put out her first music. You know, can, can you come be a part of this? And so it started off on a consultant basis. Um, I'm, I'm, they sent me the first EP. Um, and that these are long stories. I don't know if y'all want to hear it. Hey man, let's, <laughs> let's, let's hear it. Okay, yeah, we will get into some some regular top yeah. things, but I want to okay you know, set the tone though. Yeah, so they they sent me the first EP. Um, again, she hadn't put anything out yet under Money Long. And the thing is, when you when you change your name, you start from scratch. Like your Spotify um account zero monthly listeners. You know what I mean? Your Apple is you're starting from zero. You know what I mean? And so. This first EP was ready. I listened to it. I thought it was really good, but I didn't think it was for her. You know what I mean? Like she's used to writing Ariana Grande hits, things of that nature, and that's what this EP sounded like. It sounded like these are the records for Ariana. Can you stop and talk about that for a second? Because I yeah. always say that's one of the problems that a lot of songwriters and people that talent yeah. go through. Yeah. It's like you don't know who you are yet. Right. I'm, and, and that and that was that was my issue with the first EP. I was like, man, this really sounds a lot like. It was like this is the thing. They were hit records. Of course, right? they they were fire records. But right. it wasn't you. You're you're a black female R and B artist. This this isn't indicative of that. This isn't what that would sound like. You know what I mean? And and so we put out the first EP on a consultant basis. Um, and at that point, you know, I started my distribution company, NPR Global. And I and I said, I was like, man, I really believe in you. I would love to like do a situation with you. Um, and she had went to all the labels. Of course, she has ties to every single label she writing all their hits um and they couldn't work out a deal so she didn't go with any of the majors and so i was like well hey this is an opportunity for me like i believe in you greatly like let's let's work out something where you get to keep your masters um you get majority of the revenue i just get a a, a, a minority share of the revenue and we and we you know we work together we build a partnership and so that's what we did um and the first thing i had to do was i had to go in and work on the music and again keep in mind not that she needed help writing songs. She's the greatest writer. You know what I mean? But when you're when you're an artist, you have to know who you're talking to. You know what I mean? And so I, I explained to her, I'm like, you know, if we want this to work, number one, we're black. We can't skip over black people. We can't come out with Ariana Grande type hits. Like you have to start with the culture. I was like, let's l let me let me explain to you how you write to these young black girls. As best I can. I'm not a young black girl. <laughs> but I'll say you about, yeah, to, you about to get the heat coming. Yeah, on. as best I can. You know what I mean? I'm not a young black girl. But I understand 
the music that resonates with our culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so we just went through that process. And so when you hear EP2, EP3, you hear the drastic difference of now we're speaking directly to our people. You know what I mean? Like, and so that's what we went there and did. Well, it, why, do, why do you, well, no, not why do you feel like that, but why did she choose mm -hmm. R&B specifically? Obviously, you know, you can- You know what's crazy? You, but she yeah. has the talent to say, hey, I want to- Yeah, she, she, she really loves country music, and so do I, actually. I really love country music, too. Um, King Bed is a country song. Yeah, it is. It is, exactly. And, and so she does have a country projects ready. Okay. You know what I mean? But her manager, from from what I've been told by her, her manager convinced her like R and B is the way to go. You know what I mean? And what, so her manager. What's the strategy from that? So, it's, so since the manager said that, what do you think? I mean, I just, I just think you 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 have to understand where you can be successful. And not to say that she couldn't be so she could probably be the biggest country artist of all time. You know what I mean? But. I think the strategy was this is where we'll be successful. You know what I mean? This is this is where we start this thing off because you still can get a, a money long country record, no problem, right? But um, they wanted to do R and B. I wanted to make sure we were talking to the right people, um, and so we went in the studio. May Matt, like bro, I loved working with her in the studio. You know what I mean? Um, I started my career um, as a label owner, but I learned later that. I am a great composer. I'm a great producer. I'm a great songwriter. You know what I mean? I learned this from being in the studio with my artists and like the talent just flowed. Um, and so I was able to do that with the greatest songwriter of my generation. So I mean, I, I love that experience. And so we we wrote records together. Uh, we talked about what we should be talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah, we talked about what we should be talking about. And that's what you get out of those projects. Uh, EP2, EP3 is like, those conversations and, and those moments in the studio um and it works you know what i mean um the the first record we really collaborated on was called just beginning um and that was her first breakout record that set up hours and hours um and so just beginning was a record where she had the beat and she sent it to me and i was just like man this reminds me of like r kelly trapped in the closet and i was like man i was just like yo what's like the the most disrespectful shit that you think but you don't say it. At least you don't say it out loud. You may say it to your girlfriends, but you don't say it elsewhere. I'm like, I want to hear what you would tell your girlfriends. I want to hear that disrespectful shit that you would tell them. And that's how Just Beginning came about. And um, we we got in there, man. It is an amazing record. And so it actually um, it went viral. And then uh, Rihanna got wind of it. Rihanna uh, responded to some some things about it. And we used that momentum to put out the EP. Dope. And on the EP was Hours and Hours. So Yeah. Dope. Yeah, man, you know, that was that was my song when it came out, man. man. I, I really rock. I actually, I don't know if I should say this. <laughs> you know what I was supposed to say? Remember when I told you how I, I misread the title forever? All he thought was hers and hers. It was hers and hers. But I, I think that actually helped yeah. us a lot, too. Right. That actually did help us. I saw early on. I I, I was uh, there when the first pop happened, like just watching on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. And I forgot her name. But it was a girl and her girlfriend. Breezy. I think it was like the girl from Breezy. Empire or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Breezy. That's I my own. Them two. So, yeah. okay, it's it's two women that are dating. And then yeah. the song, I see so, the title. So, I thought it was her that I heard. Right. So, initially, the trend was was more led by females because yeah. of that reason. Because they thought it was hers and hers. Okay. See, you know what I mean? So, the only one. Yeah. So, initially, yeah. so it was very helpful. But, but even, even prior to that song being out, and this is why I tell people, this is why the data and just paying attention to, and to the details is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, go back to five minutes ago when I said, I want to make music for young black females. Mm -hmm. That's who I thought we were making music for. That's what, that's what our goal was. Yeah. But our initial fan base, and I don't, don't I didn't, LBGTQ community, the initial fan base was that. Right. That's who that music resonated with. Yeah. And so, yeah, we came in with our intentions, but once we saw who was resonated with, we double down on it. Yep. Okay, if this is who our fans are, let's let's support them how they're supporting us. And, and so that's what it was. And, and but that's not why she titled it the way that she did. But right. it just ended up working out in our favor. I'm just glad to hear I'm not the only one. Yeah, no. <laughs> Honestly, it was like yeah. three months before I was like, you know what? Why do they keep on saying hours and hours? Like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That ended up working out in our favor, man. So seeing that, I mean, I love that though, right? You, yeah. Like y'all have a strategy and come with that, but do you still pay attention to the data? It, was, it wasn't completely off, right? Yeah. 
we're not. It's well, we're still it. young black individuals. Right. It was the LBGTQ versus right. you know the females that I thought it would have been. Right, and yeah. that was just the initial spark because you yeah. weren't necessarily wrong when it actually took when it actually off. took off. It yeah. still did resonate with those people. Right, as a whole. right. It started within a niche, within a niche. So exactly, exactly. It's really dope to see that. So what happens when you see it start to take off? Like just being in exec mode. What's the so, thing that you? <clears throat> so we put the project out as an EP. Um, on November 19th. So it was two, three early signals. So the first early signal is obviously I talked to all of the DSPs, Apple, Spotify, et cetera. You know, all of them had the opportunity to hear the project before it came out. We we did um, in-person and Zoom calls with all of them. They heard the full project. We were going out the gate with Time Machine as the focus single. Like, okay, all of the DSPs, this is the, the song we want you guys to playlist the day the project comes out. So number one, the project came out, Hours and Hours is a song playlist there everywhere. And so I was like, I'm like, okay, the editorial really loves this song. That was, a, uh, that was one sign. The other sign was our content person, Jasmine, she's our head of content. She was posting Hours and Hours before it came out. The numbers it was getting was way higher than the other numbers we were seeing. Right. So she signaled it. She said, hey, this song might be special. You know what I mean? And then the third and final signal was after it came out, you know, Spotify is a day behind, Apple Music is two days behind on data. So Sunday, I looked at the data, I was able to see Apple Music data um, from Friday. Sunday, when the song comes out, you usually, it starts at a peak and goes down. Hours and hours started and went up. That's not normal. You know what I mean? That's, that's not normal at all. So on Sunday, I, I made the call because Time Machine video, I think, or one of the videos was supposed to come out Monday. So on Sunday, I said, no, we're going to put out hours and hours video because we had the videos shot for all of them already. You know what I mean? And so Sunday, I saw that. I said, okay, tomorrow we're putting out hours and hours instead of whatever we was going to put out. So that was just the next thing. Then the next thing that happened was Breezy. It's actually Breezy's girlfriend made a video. Breezy didn't make it, but it was Breezy's girlfriend. Breezy's girlfriend made the video to it of them, just their love moments, right? You know what I mean? And I saw that and I said, man, this could be a trend. And so I reached out to literally every significant couple I knew. Um, Tom, Tony Romitti and her boyfriend at the time. I think they're married now. Um, uh, what's his name? Willie Willie Taylor. I reached out to Willie Taylor. I reached out to Ro Timmy. Everybody I knew that had influence that had a significant other. I reached out to all of them. And I would say like 80% of them made the videos. I was like, hey, this song is about to blow up. Can you take can you take this and make one of these yourself? And so that was that was the the next big step. And then the ones who said no or just didn't respond, Jasmine made it. So I so I Jasmine, go find videos of them on the internet, put it together, and we and we made it and we put it out. And so we we put it out or did y'all also did y'all also send them to them? Well we send them to we send it to them and if they didn't put it out, we put it out. Like so for example, Little Dirt. I sent it to Dirk's people. I'm like, yo, can he please post this? I begged for about a week. <laughs> they never posted it, right? Yeah. So I said, okay, fuck it. We, we hit academics. Academics post this. We'll pay you. Pay academics to post it. And then Lil Dirk responded. So academics posted the original. Then he posted when Lil Dirk responded. Yeah. And so we got two for one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, another example, um, we made Jacob Lattimore's. Um, so I managed Jacob Lattimore. And so he was dating Soraya. And so Jasmine made a video of them. And so because I managed him, I just posted it on his account. I, I, I want to say I asked him, but I don't even know if I asked him. <laughs> 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 but I, 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 I'm going to say that I asked him. Uh, so I posted it on his account. But the thing about Jacob was I knew every every couple video that comes out of him, Shade Room posted every single time. Yeah. And so sure enough, I posted it in my mind. I'm like, Shade Room, please, please, please. Two hours later, Shade Room posted it. And so... Literally, Shade Room probably posted hours and hours between 30 and 40 times for free every single time. We never once paid Shade Room. But because significant couples were doing it, they just kept posting it, kept posting right. it. You know what I mean? And so and we we basically took over the culture exactly. for about for about what, three to four months. A good yeah, a yeah. Good three, four months. Yeah. Was that the first time that you had something like that happen where you saw the shade room like naturally picking stuff up because we had done that yes so some of the clients that we were working with specifically i know with macy gray her mm -hmm. they were picking her up like crazy yeah well, uh, around the lebron 
I don't know if you saw, like, she sang this Star Bangle Bander, and, mm -mm. and LeBron had a reaction, but apparently he was reacting to, like, Steph Curry getting booed, but they thought, he was reacting to the song, to, to the song, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. Who knows what's actually true? You know, Brian, you can confirm or, or not. <laughs> but you know, like we made a lot of videos using that moment, and Shade Room was picking it up. And yeah. I don't think a lot of people understand that you truly can. Of course, it's more with influential people. Yeah, but you can literally just have that stuff happen for. Free. Yeah, it, ha it it definitely happens because. As a as a media platform, you know your job is to share the most viral content. Like you're you're sharing the stuff that you feel like people need to see or yeah. people want to see, right? right? And so you know, I don't have a problem paying for. I pay a, for a lot of posts, but I, I'm fortunate when they post for free. Like I love it. I'm like, yeah. okay, when they post for free, that just lets me know I'm doing a good job, right? You know what I mean? Like lean into it somehow. Yeah. Well, when they post it, it's done. Like that's yeah. that's 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 what you want. You want them to post it, but. Um, you know, it's just it, when when you get the free ones, it's like I'm like the Dirk and when academics reposted Dirk, I'm like, man, like we really like moving the culture. You know what I mean? That's just how I felt about it. I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. Like we yeah. really moving the culture with this. Um, and so yeah, no, nah, it's always great when they post free. It's it's, it's a possibility, but you know, I I would just tell people I don't, I don't wait for that. Like I pay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. I pay for plenty of posts. Right. Yeah. Right. So I like what you said there. Um just from a, a marketer side of things, right? Because that is kind of what it feels like. You, you you made things move multiple times before mm -hmm. and got successful results without that extra impact and people posting things. Yeah. But then when shit's moving like that, you do feel like, yo, this is like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. You know a moment of impact is made. And like you said, y'all really did take over the culture for about three, four months. That was... That man. was a song, man. It, 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 I feel like, especially for R and B, I don't even think it's just a feeling. I think it objectively, we don't have that many moments where there's a song like right. that, that takes over the culture and from that type of energy too. That was yeah. like that was it was a positive energy right. versus versus yeah. a negative. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was very positive, man. It was great. I mean, first of all, shout out to her for the song itself. Right. You know what I mean? Um. And from from what I remember, that was just something she wrote in her home, like just messing around. You know what I mean? Because normally she's in the studio, um, you know, making magic. But I think with that one, she said she was like washing dishes or something. And she just heard it beat on YouTube and, you know, it came to her. So, I mean, that's a magical thing. You know what I mean? To yeah. to turn to that's a multi-platinum record, um, Grammy winning record. <laughs> you know what I mean? It so, feels more like home than the studio, too, though. Yeah. Kind of yeah, the energy of the record. Yeah. Though, did she just... Like walk around the house streaming beats on YouTube. I don't know, man. I I don't know, but that 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 shows the the hunger it takes. Like I said, like you talking about one of the greatest writers of our generation who still just has that that hunger for it. You know what I mean? So that that shows like I think it shows passion, but it also shows hunger. Like she really wanted this shit. Like she really wanted to have her stamp versus you know writing for other people and helping them get their stamps. Yep. You know what I mean? And so, you know, she was so hungry for it. She at home listening to YouTube, like, I'm going to do what it takes to find this record that's going to take me up through there. You know what I mean? So, shout out to her, man. Um, a Grammy, bro. That's, I, this, what's so crazy about it is we're independent. We're, we're not tied to, to any label situation. Like, we did all of that. We went number one on Remy Radio, number one on Urban Radio, um, number seven most streamed song in the world. At, at one point, we were number one on Apple. We were number one on Spotify. Um, I mean, I think we made this number one on TikTok. Um, bro, just so many number one, so many without anybody's help. It was literally just us hiring the right teams, like hiring the right radio team, hiring the right UK team. We hired an Australia team. You know I mean, we hired so many different teams to make sure this world was recognized globally. Yeah, I mean, his record was recognized globally, man. And so that is for, for that to combinate to a Grammy is like, yo, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, yeah, that's I'm, crazy. You know what? I'm glad you said the independent thing because yeah. that just sparked in my head. I remember there was a situation Corey and I had earlier last year where things were going on with the artists and we were considering possibly like signing her or something. Mm. Um, and I actually hit you up mm -hmm. just to see what you thought about the situations. You were one of the main people I thought of. And and asking you about your situations, you said, because I, I was thinking about a JV, that was the main thing. 
and I was asking you about your JVs. And you're like, yeah, I've done JVs. I've done these things. But it's like, honestly, I don't even need a label anymore. Right. Whatever. And I would like you to kind of talk about why, what that perspective is. Yeah. And yeah, let, let's just start that. Like seeing, going through those situations and getting to the point, I don't need a label. Right. I mean, I, I've been, what's, we're, we're on year 18 now, man. So I'm like, I'm a full grown career person. <laughs> it's my 18th year of my career. Um, you know, I've done it all. I, I, I started off independent. Um, I broke my first artist independently. And I'm very fortunate that that artist didn't get signed because I wouldn't know what it's like to do your own thing. You know what I mean? Um, I was this young kid out of Mississippi and we were the number two largest artist on MySpace at the time. And none of the labels would sign us, but we weren't connected to any any veteran. You know what I mean? Soldier Boy got signed because he was connected to Collie Park. You know what I mean? But we were just us. Like, we didn't have any any industry veterans. So, like, when they called us up to me, is this this young country dude from Mississippi and his young country artist. They not finna give us a deal. But that was, like, the biggest blessing because it forced me to figure out, you know, how do I do this on my own? Um, and I didn't even notice until Ghazi told me. Ghazi came to me and he was like, man, you're the first person to ever put a mixtape on iTunes. And I didn't know this at the time, but I found a company called TuneCore Cause I was like, I saw a beer commercial actually funny. It was a Budweiser commercial and it was two brothers and one of them did the marketing and one of them did the brewing. And so the commercial was like, you can brew it, but can you sell it? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, damn, we making this music, but we not selling it. And so I figured out how I did this before Google. So I still don't know how I figured out, but I figured out, okay, there's this company TuneCore and I can put my music on iTunes. At the time, the only way I knew to get music to, for sale was be with a label. You know what I mean? And so I put it our music on iTunes. First month, we made $30,000. You know what I mean? And I'm just Which like- artist was this? His name is The Joker. The, oh, yeah, yeah. The Joker. Yeah. 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 He was going crazy. On yeah. His yeah. name is The Joker. So I, yeah. I put our music on iTunes. First month, $30,000. Second month, $30,000. Every month, $30,000, 30000 30. And like, you know, coming from somebody who was dead broke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that that was life changing us. And so that that gave me- the the window that it's possible to do these things on your own yeah. you know what i mean um and so my next artist that i blew up was k camp um and in that situation i did a jv with interscope but at the time when i did the jv we were the biggest independent artists in the country we had two songs on top uh, on, on radio top 30 we had cutter off and money baby both in the top 30 of radio which is radio at that time was completely major driven you don't be independent and be up on radio like Especially that. Especially that time. You know what I mean? Back that back was, then, what, that was like 14, like 2013, yeah. 14. So like we had two. And so I had taken him. What If I knew what I knew now, I wouldn't have did the deal then. Because we already bigger than the artists on y'all label. So what do I even need y'all? But I, I didn't know that back then. Right. So I did the JV. And now, you know, we, we getting pennies off of that. Like we recouped and everything. We did six platinum records back to back. You know what I mean? So we recouped all of that. And so we get paid off that, you know what I mean, twice a year, which I still think is BS. You know what I mean? Because it come when you were the major, you they pay you two times a year and they're always late. Yeah. I've never got paid on time. So I hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now I'm 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 getting the coins, the pennies yeah. off of that deal when we could have been walking away with millions had we just stayed independent. You know what I mean? That that's the the trick of it is they they they're t they're stealing your wealth. You know what I mean? They're making you they're making you rich. They're getting wealthy. Yeah. And so that's that's what I learned in that process. You know what I mean? You know, so do you think those situations, like you said, you knew what you knew now. Yeah. Right. You wouldn't have done it. But from a business executive side. Right, yeah. Do you think someone needs to go that route to well, to learn or you know, I, like young JR started? Yeah, it, not. How I, would you do it? I did. I did learn from those experiences. But um, the main thing anybody that gets in the building will learn is that you already had it. That's the main thing you'll learn. Yeah. You you go in that the building. Yeah, that's exactly. That's how you got in the building. Yeah. You the main thing you'll learn from going to a major is damn, I already had it. Yeah. I already had it. You know what I mean? So that's the main thing you learn. Um, but I would say I would say now it's so different and so much better because we're not dependent on stores anymore. You know what I mean? Back back then in the K Cam days, it's like we were still selling CDs. Like um Apple didn't start into 2015. So I'm talking 13 and 14 when we were hot. So we're still selling CDs. We have iTunes too, yep. you know what I mean? But for the most part, people are buying their music out the stores. You know what I mean? But now we're we're on DSPs. And so 
DSPs literally have uh, what I, I call real estate for independent artists. So like they, they this is where we put independent artists. We have to put this many independent artists. So there's space for you without being signed to anybody. And if you know a lot of these people in the DSPs, they're champions of independent artists. You know what I mean? They're like us three sitting right here, young black gentlemen, right? Our counterparts are the people that are inside of these buildings. Yep. You know what I mean? So if you go work at Spotify, what's going to be your mindset? I'm going to help everybody. And that's that's exactly the mindset of the people that's working inside of Spotify. You know what I mean? So so the label is really unnecessary when the store now is somebody like you that's willing to help me. You know what I mean? So I'm giving you my master's just to go and talk to somebody that looked like me. When I could have kept all that and, and been talking, hey, listen, Carl Cherry's on Twitter, Instagram, you know what I mean? He, Carl Cherry is the head of uh, Spotify Urban. Um, you got people like Walter Tucker at Apple. He's all over Clubhouse. He's all over Instagram. Like the people who are in position to help you are not hidden away. They're not gatekeepers. They're public. You know what I mean? And they're constantly on a daily basis, uh, a laser at Spotify. They're on a daily basis tweeting, send me new music. You know what I mean? So like your access to them is is wide open. Yep. Um, and so in order to sell music, you have to be in the stores. The major labels biggest hole was they controlled the stores and they controlled the media. You have DSPs and social media. So now why would I assign to you? You don't control social media. You don't control the DSPs. So therefore, you're just a middleman, you know. And again, there are great people inside the label. So I'm not, I don't want to talk completely down on them, but we're talking from a business structure and a wealth mindset. It's unnecessary. You know what I mean? It's, it's just an unnecessary uh, service at this point. Yeah. Now you still need experts. But my my what I've been telling people is there are so many experts out here that have started their own individual situations. You know what I mean? Joey IE left Interscope, now has his own thing. Um, what's my guy that just left Capital? Um, now has his own thing. I can't think of his name. Uh, but Ray Daniels left Warner, now has like all of the top executives are are sort of, you know, branching out and starting their own things and will give you a way better structure than had you signed to the major. So like you have these different experts that are around that can help keep your wealth in your pocket but still provide you the expertise like myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still can provide you the expertise while helping you keep your wealth. And so for me, it's like, if you get to that level where you need those experts on your team, they're out there now without having to give away everything. Beautiful, beautiful, man. Well, with that, just a reminder, in the bio, of if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to have a link to give you an idea of what we're getting into together. As I said at the beginning of this podcast, we have a really dope partnership. So if you go to brandmannetwork.com slash shared information, because we're bringing our minds together to give you some of the most valuable content out here, because there's a lot of people who are doing videos and talking about things, but very few who are actually doing it. Y'all heard this entire podcast. JR is more than doing it. And y'all already know what we do. We pride ourselves on people being people who actually do it. And we want to bring y'all more people just like JR. So go to brandmannetwork.com slash shared information if you listen to my podcast. But of course, on YouTube, the link will be in the description. Now, with that being said, hey, J Jacory, when we get into the second part, bro, I'm going to need you to. I know you got <laughs> one mic today, so I know, you know what I mean? Like, you, hey, you know, you know, people will. uh be making comments and stuff like well i'm gonna <laughs> you know how these folks are but like with that being said want to get into one of the first topics today because you know we always have to get into some of these and Let's do it marketing artist versus breaking a song versus breaking an artist and i think that people don't understand that just marketing isn't enough right yeah there's a skill set a way of looking at the marketing activities like someone will learn how to run ads and think oh okay i'm supposed to break off of just doing this or someone will learn how to do you know some influencer campaigns and think that's enough so want to touch on everybody's perspective but what does it look like to market an artist versus breaking a song but why isn't breaking a song the same as breaking an artist what's the difference there so jr Want, want you to start it up and Jake, Judge Corey want to hear your thoughts too. Well, and real quick, can you, can you start about defining what you feel like breaking is? We get that question. Okay. Like what is breaking? All right. So breaking a song, I would feel like 
for a song to be broke. I mean, for me, and I don't know if this is like a, a level thing, but for, for me, breaking the song is, you know, the song going, you know, being certified in some way. So a gold or a platinum single, um, that would be a breaking the song. Um, From ground zero? Like, let's just say it's a, a brand new artist. I mean, yeah. Let's just say breaking them into the game, period, where people are paying attention to it. How many streams well, if you had to put streams on it? So so breaking, but that's the difference. I guess that's the difference between breaking a song and an artist, right? Yeah. So so breaking a, a artist, I, I feel like there's a few stages. There is breaking, then there is immersion, and then there is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Established. Right. And then after that, you go into like superstar. You know what I mean? So breaking, I would feel like is anything under a million spot, um, monthly listens on Spotify. Like, I feel like anybody in that category is um, let, let's go as low as a quarter million to a million. Anybody in that category, they're on the verge of breaking. You know what I mean? Then I would jump up to like. I would say two and a half million to five million is emerging you know what i mean and then I, I think once you get once you get into seven or more you're an established artist you know what i mean like you're you're an you're an established artist and then superstar is going to be 15 plus 15 million plus monthly listeners is a superstar all right so with that being said what about for an individual song so again for an individual song I, it, it has to be certified you know what i mean it has to be like you know, gold plus, you know what I mean? For an individual song to, to break, like this song has been broken, it has to be certified. What does it take in terms of amount of streams? Uh, so so, right so US, right? So like every every uh, country, and I know I say that word very country, but every country, <laughs> every, every country, you know, the streams in that country count for certification. So like, for example, if I have 10 million streams in US and 10 million in UK, I can't, I don't have 20 million streams counted towards certification. I have 10 million in the US and I have 10 million in the UK. So like you have to get 75 million, uh, more around 80 million streams in the US to be US certified gold. You know what I mean? It's about, it's about 75 to 80, somewhere in that mark. And then 150 to 155 is platinum. 155 million is platinum. You know what I mean? But they have to be US based. I'm glad yeah. you noted that because I, I remember I was talking to some exec or whatever and they were showing us a song that was doing like i don't know eight hundred thousand streams a day or whatever mm -hmm. it was going crazy for a good minute but it wasn't certified anything because it was like worldwide yeah and that was yeah. the first time that i you know found out that you know it has to be in that specific place right it has yeah and so like you you will see shit like i got some plaques that say like platinum and then at the bottom it says platinum in canada platinum in, you know what i mean and even for me, I was like, why does it say that? So I, I, I've gotten plaques and didn't know what it meant. So, you know what I mean? So, so I feel you. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, does that even affect like where you start to try to break artists that you're working with from ground zero? Like, are you keeping, are you keeping that in mind when you're, when you're starting to build them out? No, nah, I mean, <clears throat> luckily for me, like, I, you know, I think I have a specialty in breaking artists. Like majority of labels or executives period don't break artists. You know what I mean? Um, they can, they can amplify the artist for sure, but you know, nine times out of 10, every executive you ever met doesn't break artists. Like I, I'm fortunate that I've broken almost almost 10 artists, you know what I mean, in my in my career. So, but yeah, I, I think breaking an artist, you're starting from scratch is, is totally fine. Especially in the streaming era when it's so much quicker because of like a TikTok, yeah. you know what I mean? And so I have no problem starting from scratch if I truly, truly believe like in this talent, but I love when I don't like Justine Scott. Obviously, I didn't start from scratch there. You know what I mean? Um, and so Justine Scott, we just took her record number one on TikTok. Um, it's gonna be platinum here soon. At this very moment, we're streaming just under three million streams a day on it. Um, but they came to us and it was already moving. It was like four hundred thousand streams a day when they came to us. And so, um, I love when stuff comes with momentum and all we have to do is like like really tone in our expertise and like take it all away. You know what I mean? So stuff like that is dope too. So scratch or jumping on momentum, either way, I'm I'm totally happy with it. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. so I think that's a good point you brought up too. You talk about taking advantage of the momentum. You had the, yeah. the Justin Scott situation that happened. Was there 
right before the money loan situation? Or no, that 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 just happened. That we happened? that was so they came to us early, early December, and so we got a deal done. Um, I want to say like December 9th, um, and went directly to work. Um, and by the first week of January, we were the number one song on TikTok. Got you. Got yeah. You. So, so what's what's your first move when you see that type of something happen? like that happen? Yeah. Oh, um, you got to source it, right? So, like, this goes for any artist. When you see your streams moving, the first thing, like, if you see that first bump in the streams, the first thing you have to do is find out where is this coming from. Because if I can, if I can find where it comes from, that then I can say, how do I repeat it? Yeah. Because that's that's what a trend is, right? A trend is something getting repeated over and over and over again. So when they came to us, the first thing we had to figure out is where is this coming from? Why is why is this happening? So that we can amplify it, so that we can repeat it. So that was step one. Okay, man. Man, well, so what's what is the the move after that? Because I, I know like with, when we're working on our clients and we see that type of thing happen, the first thing we try to figure out is like how can we bring this into the real world, right? This yeah, they're having this moment on TikTok um, or Instagram or whatever. But it's like how can we? hurry up and do something to make this at least look and feel tangible to the audience also I was like do you have like a go-to move or go-to direction you well to push the artists in when you see that online momentum happening i mean so i think step one is figuring out where it's coming from and repeating it like basically more or less amplifying the trend yeah but then step two is making sure the culture knows it exists because things can be completely out of the culture they get you you have songs that you know at least in my case because i'm black and I, I deal with black culture but you have songs that are, you know, multi multi platinum that we have never heard. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And so for me, dealing with Justine Scott, who is a black artist, is like, how do I make sure we know this exists? Yeah, you know what I mean. So that was step two: is like making sure the culture knew it existed. Um, it was really step two, and then you know, simultaneously getting Justine to lean in. You know what I mean? Because the song, the song came out in two thousand fourteen, so you know, it's not. Is it's not a, a layup to get an artist to promote a song for 2014. Yeah, they're gonna be like, "Oh, this is old." And she, not to say that she did this, but I'm just saying these are some of the conversations that have to be had. It's like, "Hey, I know this is from 2014, but this could really be a big moment in your career. This could really break things open." So having those type of conversations, um, and getting her to lean in, what she was great about, um, you know, just finding the right content because Justine isn't a new artist; she has a brand to protect. And so finding the right style of content to shoot with her that 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 aligns with her brand. Um, it was it was a few, you know, just nuances that had to be worked out. Um, and then of course tapping in with the DSPs, tapping in with TikTok and just making sure everybody was on the same page of where this is happening. Um, um so sound on uh his TikTok's distribution company was hugely instrumental in this um Vivian over at Sound On. Vivian was freaking rock star with this, so like um, she made so many great things happen, um, and so just tapping in with with the network and just you know making sure everybody's aware and just going. It's like it's like going to to war for about a sixty day period. You know what I mean? Because uh, that's another thing most folks don't know. Like they'll come to me when the trend is over, and I'm like, bro, you got a window. Oh, man, I was <laughs> you, gonna ask you. You got a window. You're touching on it. Let's yeah. talk about that window, man. Why is that? Because you said, been talking a lot about momentum. It's been yeah. This thing, like. Truly, why is it so important to catch it in that window? You have to because, uh, again, trend. Uh, another reason it's called a trend because it ends. It, you know what I mean? It's it's a it's a trend for the moment, and so most most trends are going to run about forty five to sixty days. You know what I mean? That's that's the lifespan of a trend. Um, and in that moment, you have the opportunity to turn that into a hit record. You know what I mean? Um, the thing about it is like I like I tell people. There are trends, there are probably, I don't know, 50,000 trends going on right now on TikTok, right? But out of that, how do you take that 50,000 and turn the one you're working on into the number one? You know what I mean? And so I think people think it's easy and it, it's not. It's not like when, with hours and hours, just because it's a trend doesn't make it a number one record. Um, Justine Scott Collide, just because it's a trend doesn't make it a number one record. That takes expertise. That takes real know-how. It takes real money. Um, and it takes real networking. And so that's what we've been able to do is we've been able to take those, out of those 50,000 trends, we've been able to take our trend and make it number one multiple times. You know what I mean? And so if you come to me, and this has happened, DJ chose. He came to me when the trend was over. And he, actually, 
He came to me when it was going, but he didn't want to pay my fee. So he put that out there. <laughs> he didn't want to pay my fee. I was like, bro, this is what I charge. You know what I mean? And he didn't want to pay. So then when it was dying, he came. He was like, bro, I need you. I was like, well, you, you needed me back then. But I was like, I think I can help now. And fortunate for him and me, because I, I, I was unsure too. I was like, man, maybe we can turn this around. And we were able to turn it around and we ended up taking it gold. You know what I mean? Um, but if he would have came... When it was moving, it could be platinum. Who knows? See, that's, you know what I mean? That's what's so important to me because so what I realized working with artists from ground up is yeah. when they experience this big growth, yeah, they it feels amazing. Everything's right. moving right, right, and they're barely touching anything. Some of them actually like get weird and like step back <laughs> from everything and just don't yeah. do anything. Like I've heard people say stuff like, "Man, you know, I, I kept getting all these comments on TikTok, and I just stopped going on TikTok for a while." Like all oh, that type yeah. of stuff. But the frustrating thing as someone who's now seen quite a few things is, let's just say I've never done 100K streams before. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, this thing in my mind goes crazy and I'm in like 2 million streams on the yeah. song, right? But you, mm -hmm. Ja'Cory, are like, bro, this should be 50 million streams. Right. But they don't know that in that window is the difference between it being 50 million and maybe... 10 million or 20 million like it's like being in the zone in sports right, right. It's like, you really you gotta lock in dollars today yeah. you'll get back 20 dollars in this window usually you put in five and you only get two back today you get 20 but yeah. that's not gonna happen for for, but for so long so like that fee yeah right? if you're gonna pay that fee <laughs> now is the time yeah. to pay it right <laughs> yeah like you got you gotta catch it you gotta catch it in the moment it's, it's best to catch it as soon as it starts like if it's best to catch it from the very beginning because um, that makes it easier to find the source, number one. You know what I mean? Because um, finding the source is very important. It's, it's, it's very important to find, like, what started this. You know what I mean? Um, but catching it from the beginning is best. Um, but definitely just know, like, after 60 days, it's, it's just about a wrap. You know what so, I mean? Like, it's, it's very rare that tr trends happen twice. Right. It's very rare. I've seen it, but it's it's extremely rare. What, when it comes to, like, looking for their source, do you have, like, any special things you use or you just got your team well, scoured the internet luck, luckily like um tiktoks uh and real search search is is really good yeah. you know what i mean so it, is, it comes down to the technology you know what i mean luckily like the technology is good and it makes it easier to find yeah you know what i mean like you can search like keywords for like so like there's a song uh i think it's called throw it that's going viral Right, but the song is you don't need no beat. You better hype this, hype your best up. So I can type in hype your best up yeah. and find it versus having to know the name of the song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, so luckily because their their search engine is so good, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, good. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. But before we leave this subject, because you know talking about Justine's God that being a TikTok song and obviously mm -hmm. went number one. People have been talking a lot lately giving all this TikTok slander out, saying that TikTok is it, it, you know, it had its moment, it's done, it's so much harder to break songs, right? Right. In short, my perspective is, right, yes, it, it was that for a period of time where yeah. things were just happening. The algorithm was open. And now, and now it's a little bit harder, but it's about doing your job too, right? Yeah. So what's your perspective on TikTok in terms well, of like yeah, just the, the the state of TikTok for breaking right. music today. So yes, you missed a moment. You know what I mean? And I was screaming at I can't, I was telling everybody, do not miss this moment because I knew it was not going to last. Yep. This is what people have to understand. TikTok is a business, just like any other business. Their their initial goal was to attract as many people here as possible. How do I do that? By giving away eyeballs. I give away the views, meaning that my algorithm is wide open. I want to show you to as many people as possible. Now, once you all are here, okay, now it's time to make the money. So now these eyeballs cost. Now you have to spend money, TikTok ads, you know what I mean? So now you're paying for these eyeballs. But with that being said, it is a competition. Who has opened up their algorithm to steal you back from TikTok? YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, algorithms wide open right now. So it's like if you're paying attention, you just have to, well, you have to pay attention. Like, so for, for example, I started a TikTok, uh, I'm sorry, I started a, a Instagram page, family page. December 24th, we are now, what's our date? February 15th, 16th. So about 50 days in. 
I haven't spent any money. The page had no problem. I, I started the page at zero. In the last 50 days, the page has reached 2 million accounts. All I'm doing is posting content. You know what I mean? And it still don't got no followers, just like how TikTok, you don't have to have no followers. All you have to do is post good content and the algorithm is going to make sure it gets seen because they're trying to make you come back from TikTok. Hey, man, come on back over here. We're giving it away. That's what's happening right now. So you just got to pay attention to where they're giving away the audience. And right now that's YouTube shorts and that's, and that's reels. Back to music on TikTok. You missed it. You should <laughs> you should have been here when it was popping and we were screaming get on TikTok. But you know us black folks, we was like, oh, they dancing. <laughs> now it's still possible. It's just not as possible. You know what I mean? So it's still there. Like so on, on the same token, I I started a family TikTok page too. Um, and we had two videos. I have a video on there that has four million views. And I have a video on there that has like a quarter million views. So I was still able to get some, some, you know, traction on that page on um, almost four and a half million views in total on that page. Um, no money spent. And see, the, the thing about that, though, is like, had I been an artist, all I would have did was put my music inside of that content. And that would and, and if that if I had done that, that would mean in the past 50 days, having spent no money, 6.5 million people have heard my music. You know what I mean? And and I tell artists, it's, it's, it's that simple. It's consistency and content. Content consistently. That's all it is. You know what I mean? But also you have to you have to be an artist in the sense of you have to put the music in there indirectly. If I'm just trying to flush the music down their throat, it's going to be a lot harder. But if I'm making good content and indirectly showing them my music in that content, then I have a way better chance of them hearing my music and discovering. Like content is all about discovery. I'm using the content to be discovered. So for me right now, I'm building a family brand. So I'm not selling them anything directly. I'm just showing them my family. I'm introducing them to my family. And in the past 50 days, like I said, about six and a half million people have seen my family. You know what I'm saying? So it's so possible, but don't rely on just TikTok. If I had relied on just TikTok, I would have missed the two million people over here on Reels. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So you gotta watch. Yeah, watch yeah. Those. Don't don't rely on just TikTok. As somebody who's had the success you've had with their music and helping artists, what makes you start a family page? <clears throat> well, and this is just a personal thing. Everybody's different. Some people, you know, they like they really want to dominate and be on top of something forever. Um, I, I don't have that same desire when it comes to, to music. You know what I mean? I love making music. Um, and I think that's, you know, now we get in person, that's part of the, the issue is we're we not really making music no more. Like everybody has their own home studio, they're at home recording in a closet. So it's not like a, a collaborative effort. Like when we're coming in the studio, I got the producer, I got the writer, I got, you know what I mean? I, that's the aspect I love most about music is, is, is doing that part of it. Now I'm more of a, I'm behind the computer. I'm behind the desk. I, and listen, I've been 10 times more successful behind this computer than I ever was the other way. Yeah. But it's not about success to me. Like, I, I like to do what I like to do. You know what I mean? I, I, I do this stuff because I, I love it. And the part I loved is gone for the most part. You know what I mean? There, there's, people aren't really doing that no more. And so the success is great. I, I love it. You know what I mean? But there are also other things that in life and you know, I had a conversation, we were real personal, had a conversation with my wife and she, and she was just like, you know, if you do start, because I've always been about content, even before content was the big thing, I was always about content. And so she was like, well, if you start a family brand, you'll spend more time with your family. And I was like, mm, you're right. So, and so that's why I was like, you know what, I will start a family brand. So that way, um, because she knows me, I'm about business. You know what I mean? I'm about business. But if I can make this this family thing uh, a business that means I'll be living for a living. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so that's that's more desirable. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. That's dope because I mean I feel like with that in mind, like you hear people from the old school. I would say I want I want those complete old school. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like we hear people from the past and they just complain about the things that aren't out. But I don't hear enough of like what was missing that you love. Like just from the yeah. love of it. Not like this ain't as good. This is trash. Yeah. It's like, yo, I really enjoy this part of the game. Right. This part of the game is gone. But then, you know, the life hack that you're on right now, 
yeah. like putting family and the business together. You know, when that starts to take off, right? I mean, you start to get the Tide Pod ads, you know? <laughs> right? Exactly. And like that's gonna be a whole other thing. Your skill set, yeah. You know what to do with that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely built for it. I mean, <clears throat> because you you can do you know multi million. Like um, Justine is a good example. Justine does multi million dollars in brand deals every year. Um, you know, just talking to her mother about that. So you can do multi millions and brand deals every year, but then you can start your own brand and, and be a billionaire. You know, like a Rihanna, like a Kylie Jenner, et cetera, like that. So, you know, I'm not trying to be the Kardashians, but I know with my skill set, I can make my family, you know, close to as famous. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not even trying to be famous, but I understand what I can build from that fame, what type of wealth I can build from that fame. Um, and so, so you have that aspect to it. And like I said, it's like you're literally living for a living. The stuff that's going viral on those pages, that's just our life. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not working. That's just literally that's what's happening in our life, and it's viral material because we're sharing it, and, and I know how to frame it yeah. to make it viral material. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's literally living for a living, and so I, I think that's our. But and, and I'm not saying that I'm just you know I'm done with music, so I don't want I don't want the people out there to get that mistake. But you ask me why I'm doing that, and that's that's why yeah. it's finding that passion in a different place. Yeah, exactly. So. You mentioned Justine a couple times in yeah. the TikTok and all that stuff. You met, you said something earlier that I wasn't aware of. You said the song first came out in 2014? Yeah, was written the, in 2014? the song was released in 2014. Released? Yeah. Why do you think it started to pop now? Do you think it has something to do with the grownish? Well, well, it, it wasn't that. Um, Man, that's a, uh, another lesson I teach artists, bro, is like you just got to put the energy out there. And, and and as the more energy you put out there, the more possibilities you for, create for the energy to come back. And so Justine is a great example of that. K Cam is a good example of that. So I'll, I'll start with Justine. Song came out in 2014, right? The reason that it has popped again, the the spark was a uh, uh, a content creator that works on a Netflix show decided to use the song as part of their TikTok. You know what I mean? So like they were creating TikToks for their show's TikTok page. They used the song and that was the initial re-entry into people's minds. And then from there, people took it and started creating with it. And that's and so Justine had zero to do with it. But her, it would have never happened had she not been putting out music. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And so the same thing, I go back to K-Camp. If you weren't like a solid, solid K-Camp fan, I think from around 2016 to 2019, you would have thought he wasn't even releasing music, but the whole time he kept putting out. And this is prior, me and him had already parted ways. We parted ways in 2015, but he was kept putting out music, 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 music. And then some little girl decided to do a dance to his latest song. K-Cam had nothing to do with it, yeah. but he had everything to do with it because he was constantly putting it out there. You know what I mean? That's what artists had to understand. Like magic does happen. Like miracles do happen. Like you put it out there, you never know what, individual is going to take your song create one piece of content to it that's going to change your life and so that one uh person that that show hired to make tiktoks changed the scene life and that one little girl that decided to make a dance to k camp song changed k camp life again you know what i mean and so it's like it ain't always on you you know what i mean it's like what what is uh, religious but it's like god will fight your battles like all you have to do is just be present and then you know something to come along that'll bless you and just change your life yeah I like that because the idea of just continue to put the energy out there. Yeah. It sounds like abstract, mm-hmm. but it really does apply when you put those situations in there. And what something that happened with us is so at this point we've had Charlie D'Amelio posts. Yeah. Maybe four or five times. Never paid her. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. And the first time was completely accident. But the next few times there was we we had some strategies and kind of like how to increase the possibility. But the first time what happened was we had this song on TikTok. This is like 2019. Um and we're working it. It starts to take off and it gets to around ten thousand videos. Artist budget runs out, right? The next song, Charlie D'Amelio finds it before we even really do anything. But yeah. she discover there do the first song. Yeah. So she never first posted to that first to song. The first like one. Now you have that person in your vicinity. Yeah. Right. And consuming your like Justine, right? She wasn't pushing that song anymore. Yeah. But years later, 
someone went down the rabbit hole of just seeing because they might have found they probably album. found a new song and was like well, what else does she have right and so yeah. you never know and it, it, it really again it sounds like this abstract thing but it really is practical as yeah. long as you know you keep putting energy out there and you know for hopefully you have ownership of that stuff right? yeah that's yeah that's cool. another that's another piece to it like you know when she put that song out she was on atlantic but when she left atlantic her mother's an entertainment lawyer so when she left Atlantic, her mother was able to get those masters back. Nice. Yeah, so excuse me, so she owns that song, and so every stream, Justine's pocket. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Now, the last subject I want to hit you with today is just the idea that indie artists can make a living without being famous today. I want to just read yeah, definitely. the uh, statement straight from a quote from Dan Runcy, my, my guy, well, uh, well, actually, I wrote it straight up. He, he basically said, yeah, today, any artist can make a living without um, being, being famous. famous. The whole yeah. idea of it. Um, so shout out to Dan and Trapital. What do you think about that idea and how can they do that practically? So this this lends us to the, leads us to the future, right? I was actually having this conversation on the way here with somebody. Um, streaming has been a phenomenal success in my eyes because it took away literal gatekeepers and so now everybody can reach the masses right but because you can reach the masses doesn't mean you're going to get rich or wealthy because you're still getting pennies per stream but now what's coming next with web 3 you're going to be able to go direct to consumer um and we just did this with la russell la russell we we sold his album before it came out before his album had even dropped, we already had accumulated $100,000. And then the beauty of that is he didn't have to wait three months for DistroKid to pay him. The The moment that the person paid for the product, it was in his wallet. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he had that $100,000 before the album even came out. That's direct to consumer. You know what I mean? And so where we're headed, you don't have to be famous at all. If you have a thousand solid fans that are willing to give you ten dollars every time you drop an album, that's a hundred thousand dollars every time you drop an album. Well, if you drop, let's just be modest and say you drop two a year, you're making two hundred thousand dollars a year off the music that you know. Sadly, I hate that you're making in your closet. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean. The music that you're making in your closet, you're making. You have a thousand solid fans. You're not famous at, but you could have ten thousand followers. You're not famous at all. But you're making two hundred thousand dollars a year off your music. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you throw some live concerts in there where you charge those same fans a dollar to show up. Well, let's say you do three concerts a year. Like, I mean, you, you're making money at many different ways. Now you want to drop a book. Like Russell drops books. Now you drop a book. Like you, you, you're you're constantly finding ways to feed your fan base, and they're feeding you back by buying directly from you, and you're getting that money instantly. You're no longer waiting for DSPs to pay you two, three months later. And so that's that's where we're headed. Russell's from I know he's Cali. Uh, um, right? Vallejo. 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 Yeah. Where where is that like outskirts of L.A.? Yeah, it's Here? Bay Area. It's, okay. it's the outskirts of uh, uh, San Francisco. Sure I was right about this. Man. Yeah. Like, from what you observe, what is it in the Bay Area water? Because they got a a long history of very entrepreneurial artists there. I mean, it's probably that. Like, La Russell is a product of Nipsey. You know what I mean? Like. Oh. You you you're only going to go as, as far most of the time as your examples, um, and so that's that's why I love being such an educational person because I'm like, yo, the next person after me, it's gonna be crazy because I'm setting that example for them. You know what I mean? And so, um, big up to our partnership that we're doing because you guys are the people that I've been missing. You know I mean, I've built a team that's passionate on breaking artists, but now I have a team that's passionate on educating artists. You know what I mean? We're gonna break these courses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so 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 big, but but yeah, it's like he got to see different examples, but man, he took it to an incredible level. Like he's he's the most I would call Le Russell the most inspiring person J.R. McKee met in 2022. In 2022. Most inspiring person I met, bro. Like, like I've I've never been more happy to do a partnership than than the one I did with him, man. And it, and it's the longest it ever took me to do a partnership because he's a such a genuine person. He he took months to make sure I was genuine. You know what I mean? Um, and so I was I was so happy to be in partnership with him, man. Um, still like the most inspirational person I met last year. 
I've changed business structures, my own personal business because of Lil Russell. You know what I mean? Because of what I watched him do. What you know what I mean? So inspirational about him. I mean, number one, again, you go back to to the genuineness, but he really stands for what he says. Like he really, like he mean that shit. Like he he's going to do, you know, great business. And and you know, there's been times where he he then got on my ass, and you know, I'm a businessman, so I don't budge. But I, I still love to see his passion. I'm like, damn, be very. That's just no, but I, I love. <laughs> I love how passionate, I, like, you know, he really stand on that shit, you know what I mean? And he told me, he was like, you know, he was like, man, you know, my bad, I just, I just really believe this shit, and I believe it with him, you know what I mean? Um, and so, like, just just to watch all the good work he did, just to watch the way he worked with people, man, to watch the way he treat people, man, like, you know, hear him speak, like, I, I you know, I've grown to be a great speaker, um, fortunately for me, but, like, I love just listening to him talk, you know what I mean? Um, I just man, listen. Most inspiring person I met for sure, man. I'm I'm very proud of him because he's so much younger than me, and you know I I even saw my younger ways in him, and I tried to be that older figure to tell him like you know some of the, some of the ways you go about things. I I've been there, I did that, and I'm telling you that's not the way to go about it. You know what I mean? So hopefully he was able to pick up some of that too. You know what I mean? Because I, I definitely saw my younger self in him, man. Um, um, but I I, I love that guy, man. Dope, dope. Well. I want to leave it here. You're from where in Mississippi? So I'm from Starkville, Mississippi. Um, and I'm not really from there, but you know I grew up there. Okay. Um, I'm from, from Starkville, Mississippi. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. But my mother moved me to Starkville. She just celebrated her 30 year wedding anniversary um, on Valentine's Day. Congrats. Um, yeah. So so, but when she when she got married, she moved me and my sister to Starkville, Mississippi, and you know most of my upbringing was down there. Uh, Mississippi. So a lot of people, you know, they they stamp me as a Mississippi uh, guy, and you know I, I don't fight that. Uh, but I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. My 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 mom, our entire family is from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I also grew up there, so it's kind of like a fifty fifty situation. Yeah. So being from Starkville, my mm -hmm. way of Cleveland. Yeah. I think I used that in the right way. You did actually. That was that's perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. And now being where you are today, I know shit ain't always that sweet. Right? Yeah, of course not. So, especially in music, what's been your method and motivation for continuing on, not just to go and strive and try to be successful anyway, because I think someone who's where you are, you have that thing where you're going to be successful, you just don't know how you're going to get there, but you yeah, want to do that. Very much so. And wherever, but specifically staying in music, right? Mm -hmm. What ups and downs. Oh yeah, I got two going. two key things. I don't I don't know is kept me going, but two key thing key things that saved me, that like that was I was able to keep going because I I adhered to these two things. Um, well, let's let's call it three. Um, the 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 first one I would say is contracts. You know what I mean? This this is a business where people change their mind, people you know people switch up, people forget. You know what I mean? And so contracts have been very valuable in my career. So I, I will always advise people when you're starting business, get it on paper. So contracts have saved me for sure. Um, the other two lessons come from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, the book. You guys should all read that. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to them. You guys, you guys should all read that book. Um, and there were two key principles in there um, are the reason that I've had my success and, and been able to sustain um, the first one being, if you want to become wealthy, you have to learn how to serve people. You know what I mean? And so that's what I've done all my career is I, I've served artists. You know what I mean? Having an artist is, is like having a child. You know what I mean? And no disrespect to artists, but that's literally what it's like. Um, you're you're raising them as your kid, damn near. And so I've I've served people and helped them realize their dreams. Um, and so that's what has made me successful is by making them successful. And there's the second thing, um, and even more key, is on the financial side, Rich Dad Poor Dad teaches you to only live off of 10% of your earnings. Um, so, you know, if you make, and this is might not be practical to people, but if you make 100,000, you wanna be, you wanna have your living expenses under 10,000, you know what I mean? Um, and I can't say that I ever lived at, at 10%, but I've always lived extremely below you know, extremely low. And, and that's very helpful, especially when it came to like um, finding a woman. 
You know what I mean? Because like when I first met my girl, um, my wife now, you know, I was raking in the money. Um, but as time went on, the money stopped. But because I never lived the way I could have lived, she never knew. Like there was a, a, a good three year span. I didn't make any new money. You know what I mean? But because I had so much savings and lived so well below my income, she she lived the same lifestyle and never knew I wasn't making new money. You know what I mean? And, and that's because of what Rich Dad Poor Dad taught me. Like I've always lived well below the amount of money I make. Um, you know, because there was times, that, you know, I could have had Lambos, mansions. I could have had all of that, but I had one car. You know what I mean? Uh, I stayed in the town. <laughs> so, and so, like, you know, and, and to her, she, you know, she looked at that. That was balling to her. You know what I mean? Like, well, you know, this, this thing that got money. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, I could have had way more. But, I, you know, luckily, like, I, I hear to that, to that teaching that I've always, you know, lived below my means. And that saved me because, like you said, the ups and downs of not, not just the music business life. You know, my, my first lesson in the music business was this shit don't last forever. And that was when we got our first record deal uh, with Cadillac Dunn and J Money. It was Inside Peanut Butter, Outside Jelly. It's a Mississippi track. Yeah. So we got, we got our first record deal. That's This is how I left college. Um, I was 19 years old. We got a record deal. And my dad told me when I became successful, I can leave college. I didn't want to go to college. He made me go. But so when I got that record deal, he let me leave. Um, we went on a road, about a nine-month run, making, at that time, what I would consider hella money. You know what I mean? But... I was spending it as I was getting it because in my mind, this is my new life. This is going to be forever. You know what I mean? But no, it lasted nine months. I came home with nothing because I spent everything I made. And so that was an early lesson. Like, okay, in music, you're going to be hot and you're going to be cold. You're going to be hot. You're going to be cold. You know what I mean? There's been so many cold years, but because I always lived under my means, the cold years look just like the hot years. You know what I mean? And that's what you want to, that's how you want to do it because it's going to be cold years, no matter what profession, career, whatever. You know what I mean? Life, life is ups and downs. Life is, you know what they say about the, 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 uh, the heart EG chart? It was like, when it's like this, you dead. Oh yeah. Flat yeah. You, you flatline. So life is never going to be this. If it's like that, you dead. Right. Life is always going to be this. You right. know what I mean? And so that lesson that Rich Dad Poor Dad taught me definitely saved my career because I would have been, you know, out. Yeah, man, yeah. it's a point where you couldn't return from. Yeah, I love it, man. That's a beautiful way to end this off. Um, as we already said, y'all, go check the link in the description. We got something special that we're gonna be starting up and launching. Shared information, and as always, check us out Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm Brian Man Sean. I'm Corey. Yeah, man, it's your boy Jr. McKee, man. <laughs> and we out. Appreciate y'all. <laughs>